Hello everyone, and today it is time to make a start on breeding zebra danios part two. Um, so yeah, basically the danios are down here. They are in the little Tupperware, like they have been for a while, and they're growing really well. And I want to start preparing a tank for them to be transferred into because they can't stay in a small little Tupperware forever. Um, so that's what the, today's video is going to be all about: is how they're growing, setting up a new tank for them and moving them across into that tank and watching them grow a bit more. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So first of all, something that I have noticed, which is a little bit strange, is that these zebra danios or zebra fish, they don't have the typical stripes that I'd expect from them at this size. Um, they get into a good size now and anytime I've seen young zebra danios at this sort of size, they would start to be showing that sort of linear stripe pattern. And I'm not seeing that at all in these fish. And it's really odd. Um, I'm not sure what's happened because all of the fish that I bred were the stripes. And I'm, I would expect if they were carrying a recessive allele for no pigmentation, that I would be seeing a mix because they were heterozygotes for that gene. And I'd be getting some normal and some without pigmentation. And from what I can see, I'm not seeing any of that stripe or um, pigmentation developing yet. So I'm really interested to see how these grow because obviously these fish were long, the adult parents were long fins and they were um, normal wild type coloration. So are these ones going to develop the long fins? Uh, it's something really weird going on and they're all just not growing pigmentation. So yeah. I may end up with some sort of golden long fin, which obviously are a normal traded thing, but I would have expected to have to, to, to try and selectively breed for that rather than it just randomly happening. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how these develop. Hopefully, the, I mean, in my opinion, hopefully they do actually um, develop their normal stripe and because that's what I wanted. I wanted the uh, typical Zebra Danio. I wasn't actually looking for the long fin anyway. so. Breeding just the long fin would be fine for me. I don't need the, the, this golden variety, but yeah, we'll see how they grow up. But anyway, this is about moving them to a tank and not about their lack of pigmentation. So I emptied out this tank, uh, which used to have pencil fish and green neons and produced the tank above it uh, instead for them. So this tank is now empty. It's 90 by 30 by 30, and it's gonna be a really great grow out tank for the zebra danios. However, I have left it stagnant and full of the botanical detritus and all sorts of things in there. And now actually that's going to provide a valuable secondary food source for the zebra danios because I'm actually going to have to go away and leave them for a week. Leave them in the hands of my partner. She's not going to want to feed them three times a day like I've been doing. So giving them the supplementary food source from the decaying botanicals and the associated microorganisms is going to be really beneficial hopefully for keeping them going through that week. Um, so I'm going to leave a lot of this behind. I'm going to take out some of the water because it's probably gone a bit stagnant and fill it back up a bit, not full because um, I want to keep that food concentrated. Add some more botanicals to it to really foster some biofilms and therefore the associated life forms even more to help encourage that food web. Um, I'm going to pop an air stone in and I'm going to cover the surface or some of the surface with some floating plants to absorb some of that nutrients because I'm not going to be here to do water changes for a week. So if I can have some fast growing floating plants in there to suck up some of that waste ammonia, that's going to help as well. So let's crack on and get some of this water out and we'll go from there. I'm going to add in some mature, heated up, uh, really just ready for fish water from the established system above. All that's left to do is to get an air stone in here, keep the water aerated to stop any of those good things dying off that I've just introduced. And also to make sure that the water is optimal, optimally oxy oxygenated um, for the fish for when they get added in, which I think I'm going to transfer in maybe tomorrow or the day after. Um, I may also inoculate the tank with some sort of Daphnia cultures, Rotifer cultures, copepods, those sort of things that I have kicking about just to make sure that it's really full of life for when the fish go in. 
but there is still a week before I leave them. So I'll still be able to make sure that they are settled into this tank well, well fed before they leave with regular Artemia rotifers and powdered dry food to make sure that they are all okay. So yeah, I'm gonna aerate it now, and then floating plants and fish hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I'm keeping the water level nice and low and I'm just gonna slowly top it up because they're so used to such a short, shallow tank, but I don't wanna increase that water level huge amounts and shock them too much. So I've got my air pump, I'm just gonna plug it in down the bottom here. Bring the Aston up and pop it in the corner. And it'll get held in by the cover slide. Just to keep it nice and aerated over the course while there's no filtration in this tank. As soon as the fish get big enough, I will add a small internal filter. And I'll actually probably move the adults on and move them into the tank upstairs for them. Um, I do have other plans for this tank at some point, but for now, this will be a great nursery for them to grow up in. Uh, for now though, fish and come back across. I'm actually going to add some of the water from this tank into, into here just to slowly acclimatize them across to their new conditions and get them used to having an environment with slightly more particulates in the water. And if there's a slight change in water chemistry, they all get acclimatized over to that slowly. So I've just added 200 mil. Each one of these is about 50 mil. So I've added about 200 mil across into there. Probably about a third of the water, just so that they are fully acclimatized and accustomed to this water. And I'll do the same again tomorrow morning, just to make sure that they are, are used to that. So it's the next day, and excuse the mess behind me, I've been just trying to take some photos of the Becker and Bellis. Um, but it's time to carry on with this tank and get some floating plants in there. So I'm just going to take a few pieces from the mature tanks that I've already got set up, because again, it's going to add even more microfauna into the aquarium. So first of all, I've got some water lettuce in this expanded barb tank. So I'll grab a handful of that and just transfer it over. But the, the water lettuce roots get really quite deep and I don't want too much of that because it's just going to take up some of the swimming space. So I'm also going to pop down to the plant farm tank and grab out a good handful of the Salvinia. A bit more of that. So I've got loads of it down here, and I don't really need it. So I've now got clean water aerated overnight. I've got floating plants in there. I'm gonna bring the fish down into it as well. And then I'm gonna prep some botanicals because although I left some of the botanical detritus in there, I want to add a few newer pieces because newer pieces foster a lot more biofilm typically and that will attract and help feed even more microorganisms to feed my fish in a week's time when I go away. So I'm going to lower the fish down into the water, move the cover slides to the end and just Hello. gently pour them Apologies for that, but it's all part of the ecosystem. And in they go. Let's make sure that they all get transferred out. So you can just see a couple of them down in this corner here. Investigating their new home. So now we'll leave these fish just to settle into the home and forage the natural food sources. I'm gonna delve into my botanical box, which has some new additions. So let's see what we've got and what I'm gonna use to foster the biofilm for this tank. So in my box of seed pods and botanicals and stuff, I've got a whole load of new goodies. 
And straight away, these lotus pods, at, lotus seed pods at the top here, look ideal. I um, actually think these would be really good for the knife fish fry I'm also growing up at the moment, because these little tiny grooves are going to be perfect for them to hide in when they're small. And I know for a fact these foster so much biofilm, they've got lots of surface area, they attract a lot of biofilm which will help the microorganisms that are going to help supplement their food source as well. So I think maybe a couple of seed, um, lotus seed pods for the knife fish tanker and one for the zebra fit banners as well. This palm ring looks really quite interesting as well. I've not used this before, so this might be a perfect opportunity to see how, how it looks, how it sinks and behaves before I plan a proper, a more aesthetic um, scape for it. So I can test it out in, in this sort of um, less aesthetically um, important type of situation and give it a go there. And then I can plan something more proper in the future for the others that I have. And the final one I got, the classic alder cones. I actually don't want too many um, tannins and these are great for tannins, but they're also really good for surface area and biofilms as well. So I'm gonna give them a really good boil first, um, get out a lot of those tannins. into the hog and boil them up. Obviously, if you want to know more about botanical prep, I'll cover it again soon, but there is a video uh, which I'll link in the description produced before, all about botanical preparation. So I'm not going to go into it in detail here. I'm just going to go, leave it to boil, and I'll come back tomorrow and add them to the tank once a lot of the tannins have leached out. Uh, so yeah, we'll leave the fish here. I'm going to check on them again once more tonight, and give them a quick feed, make sure that they're doing okay. I'll take some footage now that the tank is clearing as well. And after that, I'll be back to Lara and we'll see how they're doing. It was really interesting to see how the fish sort of immediately started shoaling, but they did choose to shoal in the area that was illuminated, which is slightly unusual. You think they'd be a bit shy and stay in the shadows, but you can see only a few are down in the shadowed the areas of the tank. And then I'm just going to add in some British culture just to give them some microorganisms in there to feed on. This is what I've been feeding on for the last sort of, well, however long they've been alive for. So this just helps to transition them onto the new diets that I'll be starting to feed now they're in the bigger tank. So it's the next day and I've boiled up the pods. As you can see, they are actually still floating quite a bit. I didn't clearly boil them long enough. Um, the lotus pods do seem to take a long time to sink. Um, but what I'm going to do, so I don't actually care about aesthetics, I'm going to get them in the tanks and let them sink in their own accord when they're in. Obviously in the Zebra Dania tank the water is so shallow that they'll pretty much be touching the substrates anyway. Uh, and the outer cones and stuff are all sunk and they can go in as well. So all of these botanicals actually came from live aquatic food online. They started doing botanicals as well as live food and frozen food. So do head over to their website and give them a look. They've got a great variety of seed pods and some awesome leaves, which are going to be featuring in some of my new escapes as well coming up. So head over there and give your fish a bit of a treat and get them some live food and some botanicals to make a more natural environment and diet for them. Uh, but anyway, that's enough of that. Let's add some seed pods to the uh, nursery tanks and see how they get on. Grab one of the lotus pods, let some of the water drain off, and in it goes. Let's see, that one there is sort of sunk. And then I'll just scatter a few outer cones. And here's the palm ring, I kind of forgot about that actually. I'll add that in as well. And there we have it. And then pop some of these pods down here. These have got some knife fish fry. There's eight of the knife fish babies in here. So add them in here as well. 
and let them sink of their own accord. So that's it for this video, really. I'll do another video, maybe just a quick short, to tell you if the babies do actually survive my week away. Um, but yeah, that's it. Look out on my Instagram for some photos of the uh, Deborah Danio fry. I think they're gonna look really cool swimming in front of the Lotus pod. So I'm gonna try and get some shots of them doing that as well. But here are some of the photos that I've just taken um, uh, last night of these babies. And you can see that they are actually starting to get that little um, first stripe coming along. And it's really quite blue. Um, they don't have a huge amount of the gray pigmentation, but perhaps they're just developing it slightly later than I was expecting. So hopefully they do end up as normal colors and my fears were unnecessary. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. I'm so close to getting 1K uh, subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. And all your support is really much appreciated. So yeah, thanks again and speak to you soon.